Hello everyone, welcome to video 18 of chapter 3. In this video, we will talk about the usage of adding artificial variables as uh, a trick to put the LP problem in canonical form. So as we have commented before, this step, putting the LP problem in canonical form, is not an obvious step. In general, it's not easy. So the key step in the whole solution of solving a linear programming problem is to put the constraint in canonical form. And uh, we want that to have also a feasible basic solution. Once you have done that, then the objective function can then be easily expressed in terms of the non-basic variables. So that step is relatively easy. So we'll be focusing on the key step here. Okay. And uh, we'll be focusing on using a specific technique, that is adding artificial variables in a smart way. Let's do a general discussion. Say, consider I have a set of constraints, which is listed here as a, in the standard form with equal sign. Okay, and we, we are going to call this system, system 1, we'll refer to that. So we have n variables, and then we have m equations, and uh, they are written as a equal sign. Okay, and then the coefficients are a, with indices, and the right-hand side is bi, i runs from 1, 2 to m. Now we first make a kind of an obvious observation. Um, I wish to have the right-hand side be positive. So if in any case you have one of the b's that is negative, so let's say bi is negative, you could easily multiply that equation by a negative one sign and make the b positive and change the signs of the coefficients a. Okay, so from now on, we would require a system to be written like this with the, the right-hand side, all the bi's are non-negative, bigger than or equal to zero for all i. We now introduce a set of artificial variables and we introduce one to each equation. So totally we'll have m of them and we label them as um, xm plus 1, m plus 2 to m plus m. And these are restricted variables so they are bigger than or equal to zero. And then we add one to each equation in the system one. Okay, so here is the system the artificial variables. So we add xm plus 1 to the first equation, m plus 2, xm plus 2 to the second equation, and xm plus m to the mth equation. So we get a new system, and we call this system 2. Okay? So why um, did we do that? What advantages do we have now? Let's take a look. Okay, so we make some observations. We see that system 2 now is in canonical form with basic variables. These are exactly the one we added in. So there are m of them from with the largest index here. And the associate basic solution is now feasible because we have the assumption all the b's on the right hand side they're non-negative and then the basic solution is um, um, x1 to xm with these index all these are zero and uh, xm um, plus i on these ones are just the corresponding bi's so xi would equal to b of i minus m. I make the index i to be m plus 1 to m plus m. Okay? 
So it is in canonical form, the constraint here. Now here comes the real trick. So we want to associate the constraint in two with the following um, linear programming problem, which we call it three, we label it. So we want to minimize a quantity we call W here, which is just the sum of all the artificial variables that we introduced. Okay, so just add them up and then use the set two as the constraint and then require all variables to be restricted. Okay, before we discuss the connection between this problem and the original one, let's look at how we can solve this. So we can put this problem in canonical form, which is easy to do because the constraints are already in canonical form. So what one need to do is to rewrite the objective function in terms of the non-basic variables. Um, this is also rather easily obtained. What one could do is simply adding up all the equations in the system too. If you do that, we'll get the following. So we'll get, let's look at each term. We'll get a term with x1 if we add all the equations up, where the coefficient negative d1 would just be the sum over all the columns in front of x1 in that equation. Okay? And then you do the same for x2 and xn, so therefore this negative dj, so the sign negative, you will see why we say that, because it just become more convenient later on. So negative dj would be just the sum of all the coefficients of the jth column. Okay? And then the m plus 1 column contains only this x, and then we just add then you simply have one term and you go on all the way to x m plus m. Now this is in red. I'll come back to that. And then you add up all the right hand side and you call it negative w naught. So negative w naught is just adding up all the b's. Okay, so we make an observation um, of this red term here. Why do I put it in red? Well, this is summing from xm plus 1 to xm plus m, and we see that that is exactly w. Okay, so I can um, keep this on one side of the equation and move the w naught over here and move all this to the other side of the equation. Then I have this. So this is the, the expression that we normally would write for the objective function. Right now, the objective function is w. And now we see that the problem three, this minimization problem we started here, with the objective function expressed in this equation star here, now is in canonical form. It's a linear programming problem in canonical form. And then we can solve it with the simplex method, and we can use the LP assistant to carry out the calculation. Okay? And then these will be talked about in the next video. And I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you next time.